This year is a leap year, as I'm sure you already know. I've always wondered what the full rules for leap years were because no one really cares about it. I mean, let's be real here, this shit does not matter. There aren't exceptions often enough for me to remember any of these, but now I've written a whole long video about it, so maybe it's gonna stick in my head this time. Uh, proceed with this video at your own risk. It's full of a bunch of earth science nerd shit. And by the way, in case you haven't watched the prior videos, you can look into the intro video in the top right to see who I am and why I make these videos and whatnot. Anyway. Most people know why we have leap years in our calendar and why it lines up every four years. The answer is obvious. The year is 365.25-ish days long, but we just pretend that it's 365 and add a day every four years. It starts to get messy when you realize that it's 365.25-ish days instead of what it actually is. A real year is 365.24219 days long. But what even is a real year? How do you measure that? On the surface, a year is simply the time it takes for the Earth to go around the Sun one time, 360 degrees. This is certainly one of the ways that we can measure it, but maybe not too practical. What does it matter to us if the Earth goes around 360 degrees? Humans, for a long time, have cared more about the year in relation to the seasons, which is the root cause for a leap day. We could just not have leap days, and eventually the new year would be in June after a while. Years have been used throughout history to correspond with the solstices and equinoxes to be used as part of a farming calendar, which is the part that really matters the most. The thing is that the seasons don't always sync up to travel around the sun. Seasons are caused by tilt in the axis, and so sometimes your hemisphere of Earth is closer to the sun, as you probably learned in elementary school. Like a top, the Earth wobbles or processes a little bit. This means that the way seasons change don't always line up with a 360 degree revolution around the sun. Also, the day is slowly but surely getting longer due to tidal interactions with the moon. Believe it or not, the Earth is speeding the moon up and the moon is slowing the Earth's rotation down, which would mean that longer days mean less days per year. Also, if we define a year as 365.24219 days, how do we define a day? Is it also the time that it takes for the Earth to rotate exactly 360 degrees? You probably guessed by my phrasing that the answer is definitely no. This exaggerated example shows that the Earth goes around the Sun at the same time it rotates each day, leaving a slight gap of 360.9856 degrees in one day, in the celestial reference frame. How long is that and how do we measure that? Well, the second has been previously defined as 186,400th of a year which is 1 60th of a minute, which is 1 60th of an hour, which is 1 24th of a day, which is 1 365th of a year. Thing is, years are variable, like we discussed earlier, and so we decided to make a better version of the second that the universe doesn't agree with or like. There's a Swiss science organization that likes everything to be exactly the same everywhere, called Le Système International des Unités, or International System of Units, which I'll call SI. They use certain fundamental measures to calculate things, like a meter is based on how fast the speed of light is in a vacuum. A second, in turn, is measured by a unit called the unperturbed ground state hyperfine transition frequency of the cesium-133 atom to be 9,192,631,770 when expressed in the unit hertz, which is equal to seconds to the minus one. That's a whole lot of mumbo jumbo. Some atoms vibrate, we measure that about 9,200,000,000 times, and that's a second. This works pretty well, but it messes up the old ratio that we had to a year. Sometimes the seconds get out of sync with the day because of how specific and exact our definition of a second is. And then whoever's in charge of time just adds a second, the leap second. I found out who it is, it's the International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Service. Unfortunately for me as a nerd, but fortunately for computer scientists, the leap second is soon to die in or before 2035 with it viewed mostly as an inconvenience. The mean solar day, in reference to one SI day, is 86,400.002 SI seconds. Since Earth's rotation is slowing as time moves on, as described earlier due to the moon, one solar day matched one SI day in around 1820, but now one solar day is slower than one SI day. So now we have a measure of time. This means that a second is defined exactly with no variability or subjectivity in it. An SI minute then is 60 SI seconds as we already know, 
an SI hour is 60 SI minutes, an SI day is 24 SI hours, and an SI year is 365 SI days. I already said a solar year is 365.24219 with some extra decimals after it. Someone who's a lot smarter than me did some math and figured out how often we needed leap years, and this can get a little strange. The whole point of this is to keep the first day of spring on March 21st, and so some shenanigans are pulled. The rules we utilize are as follows. Every year divisible by 4 is a leap year, except when divisible by 100, unless that year is also divisible by 400. Thus, 1996 was a leap year, 2000 was a leap year, but 2100 will not be a leap year, nor will 22 or 2300, but 2400 will be a leap year. This makes for a pretty good, but not a perfect approximation. The current error that's generated with our calendar produces a one day error every 7,700-ish years. This means we could add some more rules if we wanted to. The most commonly proposed is to make multiples of 4,000 into regular years instead of leap years. This hasn't been implemented yet, and it might never be, but it's kind of interesting to think about. The next strange year that you need to look out for, and computer scientists need to fear, is 2100, where there's no leap day despite it being divisible by 4. There's all the facts you need to know to sound like an absolute dick on February 29th of this year. Thanks so much for watching and exploring these long ass numbers with me. If you feel so inclined, you can check out video number 2 on the history of American marching bands or video number 1 on the American Southwestern Desert. You can drop a sub if you want to see the next few months video as I'm making at least 9 more of those and they come out on the last day of every month. And I hope you have a wonderful leap day today.